Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's Burr video. Going to have a look at the weather for 10, 14 days, 40 days, Burr video, day 10. We'll take us to the 5th of November. Remember, remember, 5th of November. And uh, we'll be able to extend that beyond that with the extended affairs and ECM ensembles. Maybe on the good weeks. We'll have a look at CFSB2 for the next four weeks at the end of the video. That gets us uh, more or less to the end of uh, November now. And I should get on with that for you in a moment. Just to say about the first video series our 6M UK weather forecast. Um, we've also released a big update today, which is the uh, second winter 2024-25 seasonal model roundup. It gets together 14 one four long-range models from the world's leading forecast centre to see what they're all showing for uh, the coming winter um, for only the second time this season. So uh, check that one out if you'd like to do that. Like, share, subscribe on all today's videos and content. Thanks so much, everyone, for doing that. No weekend forecast uh, this week. I've had a very busy morning, and I've got to get the 10, 14 day done, and then start work on the um, winter update, the night winter update, which is going to be a real epic uh, release at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Well, because of that, I haven't got time to, <laughs> I haven't got time, you know, to do to do weekend forecasts. But it will be back uh, next week. And if anybody's waiting for a weather forecast for weekend, I'm so sorry, you know, but uh, I'll back to um, uh, cancel that one. But check out 6M forecast. It pretty much goes the whole of, uh, of uh, next week anyway. So, um, you know, check that one out as well. And uh, you'll get a rough idea of what's happening next week. Right, let's crack on with your 10 to 14 day then. So, we're going to start off central temperature. CT is currently sitting at 11.5. That's one degree above the 61 to 99 average of provisional to yesterday to the 25th of uh, October. So, about a degree uh, above um, the old and cold temperature average for October so far. These were GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles next couple of weeks. We're looking at Mansfield today, the red line is the third year upper air temperature average for Mansfield. And we're starting off above average with those upper air temperatures over the uh, next few days through to the end of the week. However, we have got a cold snap uh, showing up here with a bit of a plunge in the upper air temperatures at the very end of the uh, week and into next weekend. And then find the upper air temperatures recovering again, though, as we go further on through the first week into the second week of uh, November. Um, uh, also, precipitation-wise, so there's going to be some showery bursts of rain to come for some parts of the country over the next couple of days. However, a lot of dry weather really in the uh, next couple of weeks. That's a pretty dry ensemble graph, I have to say. Not until the very end do we start to see some more uh, appreciable uh, precipitation spikes. Of course, that's a very long way off. It's unreliable time frame stuff. So, really quite dry, actually, for the next couple of weeks. A big change on what we've had through the autumn so far. Temperature normally shall be 26th October to 3rd of November. It's going to be uh, above average in most parts of the UK and Ireland. Much of uh, Europe included in that. But it does look a little bit colder, actually, across parts of Norway. That's, just, that's the first sign, a bit of a hint of a change to something cold from the far north of Europe as we're pushing on into November. More about that in a moment. And the precipitation anomalies from the 26th of October, 3rd of November, they're coming out significantly drier than average. Well, ladies and gentlemen, from Earth and Old School dot net shows that we've got an area of low pressure slipping away towards Biscay uh, today, but another weather system is uh, coming in from the Atlantic in that direction. That top weather system will be dying a death, though, once it gets into the south overnight tonight. Right, let's get, uh, start going for chart data. Maybe so the latest UK Met Euro run looks for uh, midnight on Tuesday. So we're still with a bit of a trough across the country, but that's replaced by a ridge by an area of high pressure through the middle part of the week. <coughs> so sorry, everyone. Then the high pressure falls out to west and get through to the end of the week, and that starts to draw in some cooler or even colder air. Uh, around the high pressure from the north. Notice quite a northerly plunge, quite an Arctic blast coming into uh, Scandinavian and Nordic regions via that trough of uh, low pressure. Check out the upper air temperatures. Most parts of Europe becoming really quite cold by uh, next weekend, certainly northern Europe anyway. Uh, we're just on the periphery of that, very much on the periphery, kind of protected by the air of high pressure, but importing some of that cold air 
into uh, in, in, into the high pressure there. That's as far as we get to uh, with the UK Bet Euro run to uh, Saturday next week. Under high pressure, so it's mostly dry, but we'll be turning cold and make up with some overnight frost. Let's have a look at ICOM, see how that one's looking. Again, we find high pressure building up through the middle part of the coming week, bringing lots of dry weather with it. Then the high pressure locates out to the northwest. We've got this big trough of low pressure sitting across Finland and into uh, northwestern Russia. That's pulling down some cold air from the Arctic as well. Again, we're protected from that uh, deep low by this area of high pressure, but we are importing colder air, upper air temperatures and surface temperatures into that area of high pressure, particularly so for more northern and eastern parts of the country. Let's have a KMA uh, look. So once more, high pressure in control and in the ascendancy through to the end of this coming week. Then the high pressure pulls out into the Atlantic. This low over Scandinavia dragging in cold air from the north. We're on the periphery of that. Um, but we do bring some of that cooler or colder air into the high pressure. So an increasing risk of frost and fog, I think, as we go through the opening days of November under that area of high pressure. That high pressure is still there when it's truly in business up to 7th of November. So it's a prolonged spell of high pressure and mostly dry, but uh, probably by November, anyway, uh, quite chilly conditions. Let's have a look at GFS again. All much of a match through the middle part of next week with high pressure of building up south. Then the high pressure pulls out into the Atlantic. Down comes this northwesterly flow through Friday. And about to start to bring some colder air into the centre of the high pressure as well, especially so for more east air. But even in the west of the south, we are cooling things down quite a bit by uh, next weekend. So expect some overnight frost next weekend. But with high pressure in, in control, in the sense, should be lots of dry weather as well. That's set for day 10. High and dry, uh, big anti-cyclone in control and in the ascendancy. There could be some frost and fog with that. Um, night and morning. Now, if I go back a little way, so uh, that's a um, look down here. Um, so that's the uh, 6th of November. We've got some sort of things start to move out into the far uh, left chart as you're looking at it. Now, that's the 7th of November. That looks like it could be the remains of a total storm and or hurricane there. Um, not sure if it is or not. There's nothing showing up on the charts from National Hurricane Centre at the moment. But, um, you know, it's not like a significant develop development anyway to the west of the Azores. Um, anyway, back to home. We're uh, dominated by high pressure still up to the 7th of November. And then the high pressure beginning to weaken and layer pressure started to come in from off the Atlantic. So by the very end of the GFS midnight run, gets us to the 11th of November, we're starting to turn uh, much more unsettled with low pressure being heavy rain in from off the Atlantic. That is over two weeks away, though, so it's a very, very, very long way out. Uh, GFS 6Z, once more, with high pressure in the ascendancy, the middle part of the coming week. Then the high pressure begins to ease out into the Atlantic, starting to pull down this uh, northwesterly flow by the end of next week. Then uh, that's to allow some of this colder air to start trickling into uh, the east. So just most parts of Europe are looking uh, cold, though, so snow cover will start to build up across Scandinavia and Nordic regions as well, perhaps even a little bit further southwards when we get through into <laughs> Uh, next weekend, a little bit of early season uh, snowfall and taste of winter there for Northern Europe. We don't get that because we're under the high pressure. So nothing in terms of snow is going to be happening with this. But we do probably see the temperature lowering and there will probably be an increasing increasing risk of night frost for about day six or seven onwards, or night six or seven onwards. And beyond that, high pressure remains in control right way through to the end of GFS 6. Ever high pressure trying to get back up towards Greenland and Iceland again by the very end of the GFS run. So that's how we look when we get to the 11th of November, as far as we get to and another push of cold air is coming into Northern Europe on the eastern side of this area of high pressure that's blocking between Scotland and Iceland. Again, a little bit of cold air trickling into the east of Scandinavia, uh, Sweden, and also Nordic regions, Finland, which is really, really quite cold, you know, for 11th of November, with minus 10 Celsius iceberg plunging south. So a real taste of winter there 
uh, for Northern Europe. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to share everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment and say what you think about this on all of our videos and content. And uh, don't forget to tell your friends about Gals well as get them to subscribe to Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, doing that. We only need to put around 15, one five subscribers to get ourselves to 18.9k. We are so close to 18,900 subscribers. It's unbelievable. So if you could give us a sub, that would be amazing. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, doing that. Thank you so much. Right, GM, again, all much of a muchness. We reveal on next week with high pressure in control. And the high pressure doesn't go out to Westbo at the end of next week. It just sticks around the coast. So we, we're even further away from this push of colder northerly northwest winds into northern Europe. Upper air temps are still holding up there into next weekend with the cold air sort of over the other side of the north and the Norwegian Sea. That's how we look when we get to the end of the uh, GM run. And again, high pressure is away to the east, low pressure out to the west. Still reasonably mild with the upper air temperatures. Could be a bit of a chill coming in off the continent there, though, by the 5th of November. And then the ECM rounding it all off with high pressure in control through the coming week. Some cold air starting to dig into Scotland by Friday, and then the high pressure just eases out far enough to the west by Saturday to uh, allow that cold air to come down the east side. And even in the west, we see the upper air temperatures uh, lowering. Then the high pressure comes back in across the country through days 8, 9, and 10. And uh, we end up with the uh, high pressure still well and truly in control. And in the ascendancy, a prolonged spell of high pressure there. Although there is a bit of a trough in the North Sea, but might bring some showers into the east, where showers will be of rain. Uh, based on the precipitation forecast, based on that East Shed Run from Tretchup.com, a band of showing rain coming across the country today and tonight, fizzing out as it does so, introducing cooler air for tonight and tomorrow. Then further showing rain coming back in through the early part of the coming week. Most of that dies out as high pressure takes over into the middle part of the week. Then the wind switches into the north. Um, so some wintry showers uh, push southwards through the continent. You'll notice there and towards um, Denmark and, and whatnot. Um, there on the other side of North Sea, though, we've, we're kept mostly dry by the high pressure until around day 10. And then that area of shower rain comes in from off the North Sea. These are the ops on the table in the East um, Ensemble today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. Gets us to the 5th of November. 12 members of the East um, Ensembles with a rich uh, building through the country. That should be mostly dry, but could be a little bit on the chilly side. We've got 12 again with a a ridge through here. Um, uh, just doing something a little bit like that. Again, it could be chilly under that area of high pressure. 12 with high pressure right over the top of the country. And uh, we've got 8 down here with high pressure dominating the weather, low pressure up here. That's a bit milder with winds coming in from west and from southwest. And we've got 7 with uh, a ridge through here. But uh, quite a bit of low pressure in the Atlantic, it looks like uh, that low pressure will be on its way. In most of the options seem to involve us at the high pressure at day 10. So it could be mostly dry, but maybe quite chilly bonfire night. And then in two week time, these are the options that we've got. We go to the 10th of November. 13 members of the East Step Ensembles with low pressure deepening. Maybe Atlantic still just about hanging on to that ridge, but it is under a lot of pressure, and uh, that's probably starting to turn a bit more unsettled. We've got uh, 10 just here. With low pressure around Iceland, high pressure out in the middle of the Atlantic, and so the jet stream is on the northwest southeast of line. It could be turning more unsettled and still quite chilly with that. We've got 9 with high pressure out to the west, and with that... Doing something like that with wind flow and with jet stream. So that could be mostly dry but quite chilly. We've got seven bringing in an Atlantic flow. Uh, that's going to be uh, westerly and unsettled at mile two. We've got six with uh, higher pressure through here. Perhaps some sort of trough though. 
uh, around there. That could be a bit cool and showery. And then another six with low pressure in off the Atlantic. And again, that could be probably mostly mild, but uh, a little bit on the unsettled side. So high pressure dominant, uh, dominant at day 10. But by day 14, by two weeks out, we might be seeing a, a change then to something more unsettled and Atlantic driven. Long way off though, that. Right, CFS32 finally beats a 500 middle bar height and knowledge, broken down into weekly periods. And the first week bid takes us from the 26th of October to 1st of November. The next week sees high pressure in control. And so it's going to be mostly dry, starting mild, and get a bit cooler later on. Week 2 will be the 2nd to the 8th of November. High pressure again in control. And could get some frost and fog then. Week 3 will be the 9th and 15th of November. High pressure still in control once again. Um, and week four, bit of a change then. It's a sick dip to the 2nd of November. High pressure start, starting to sink southwards as low pressure develops around Green and Isom. And that sends the wind back into more of a westerly. So it's starting to go a little bit more unsettled, particularly for the north, and also becoming mild as well. Small weeks away, though, so uh, a long way off. Right, we done. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to show everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment and say what you think about this and all of our videos and content. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gaz Weather this and get them to subscribe too. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. 15 subscribers will get us to 18.9k. We are so close to 18.9k. Please, everyone, give us a sub and, uh, and get us to 18,900 subscribers. Thank you so much for doing that. Right, okay, well, I'm so sorry, but I didn't have time to do weekend forecast uh, this week. I could have done the video, but I haven't got time to do the written version. So I thought, well, let's. It's not going to be the most exciting week that we've ever had. So let's um, part that one for this week and uh, get on with 10 to 14 there. I'm going to have an hour offline now, and then I have got the um, ninth winter update to uh, start work on. So I should be working on that through the afternoon and well into the evening too. It's going to be a real epic this week, I can promise you that. Um, no, you're going to see that 10 a.m. tomorrow. Also, tomorrow, we've got 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. We will be live at 6 p.m. tomorrow uh, with your uh, with your uh, 10 to 14 day. We'll discuss the winter update, of course, but we'll have your 10 to 14 day, and we'll have some long range in that, uh, in that live stream as well. Don't forget, the clocks are going back an hour tonight. We are falling back into GMT. You've got an extra hour for uh, for staying in bed or, <laughs> or for clubbing or whatever you're going to be doing We your uh, Saturday night. You've got an extra hour for that. And so uh, just make sure you set the clock properly. Like most of most of the clocks do, do it themselves these days, don't they? Most of them are digital. But don't want you to miss uh, the content tomorrow, especially the live stream. So uh, make sure that you uh, that you set your clocks to the correct time. And I shall see you either for the night winter update at uh, 10 a.m. or for the uh, live stream at 6 p.m. tomorrow. You enjoy the rest of your Saturday. And for this one, that's all for now. And thanks so much.